Hi, this is Lou DiNapoli. Today, I'd like to discuss with you the new P320-420 in the Psytrans P line from Siemens. This transmitter represents an evolutionary step for us as Siemens because we've improved the accuracy, the functionality, as well as new four push buttons in order to set up the transmitter. The older transmitter had three. The four buttons allow us a far larger number of things that you can do with these push buttons. We also have improved the transmitter via a new display which allows much more information to be done. The new transmitter also has the similar diagnostic tools that you need or have used with the DS3, but we've improved some of the functionality to allow better diagnostics. Today, let's look at how to do the new push button setup for this transmitter by looking over my shoulder as I do it. Let's look at the push buttons and how they'd be used. Normally, when you come to a transmitter, the cover will be over the push buttons. This cover, as you know, has various pieces of information, serial number, uh, the model number of the unit, that sort of thing. Simple way to access the push buttons is just loosen this Phillips head screw, slide the cover back, and now the four push buttons are available to you. Let's look at the functionality of those push buttons. I'm going to describe the uh, buttons as though I were looking at the display in the front of the unit. So the right hand button is kind of like the enter key on your computer keyboard. It allows you to select things, lock in values, that sort of thing. Next one over is the down button. The down button is a useful one in that you use it to step down a parameter list, go down from one parameter to another. Uh, you would use the up button to go back up that parameter list. That, by the way, is a departure from what we used to do. You can now go from parameter eight, let's say, oh, I forgot to do something in parameter four. You can use the up button to go back up the list to parameter four. The left hand button is kind of, I want to go back to measuring pressure and that's really the functionality of the left hand button. Let's see how to do a simple setup of adjusting the pressure units, setting the upper and lower value for a typical transmitter by looking over my shoulder as I do it. Okay, let's see how to set up this pressure transmitter. When we walk up to the transmitter, if it's powered, uh, we see that it's measuring pressure and that the units of pressure are bar. Right now, that's what it's reading. Well, I don't want that. I would like inches of water, let's say, and I want it to be zero to 48 inches of water. All right, let's see how we do that. I want to change the parameters and get into the editing mode. So I'm going to press here the right hand button. Remember what I said, it's kind of like the enter key. It now says you're in the edit mode and you're in parameter one. Parameter one, the list if you saw it, said the pressure units and right now this transmitter is in pressure units of bar. Well. I want to edit that. So what am I going to do? Well, I want to enter into editing parameter one. Now edit is flashing, indicating that you are ready to edit the pressure units on this transmitter. You also have an up and down arrow indicating that I can go up the list or down the list to see other pressures. For the moment, I'm going to choose the up button. I'm going to move up, and now it says millibar. Oh, notice that button, the indicator, changed from a double-headed arrow to a single downward-porting arrow. That means I'm at the top 
of the pressure list, pressure units list. What do I have to do? I'll go down. There's bar, there's P, P pascals, different pressure units, and what am I looking for? Oh, there's PSI, that's familiar to me. There's grams per centimeter squared. There are 18 different pressure units that I can get. Here's millimeters of water at 6'8". What does that mean? What it means is this is units of water at 68 degrees F, which is kind of the standard for 90% of the world. Here's millimeters of water at 4 degrees C. That's the other 10% of the world. Most of the pressure units, pressure labs, have water at 68 degrees F, and there are a few that do it at 4 degrees C. Here we are at inches of water at 68 degrees. That is exactly what I want. So how am I going to select that? Remember, the right-hand button is the Enter key. I enter it, and now the editing stops, and right now, this transmitter is set up, it will be set up in inches of water. It will say inches of water on the display. This says inches of water at 68. You'll see that in a second. So I still want to now pick my values of pressure. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come down the editing list. Notice it now went to O2. So parameter two, it's saying the lower range of this instrument is minus 100 inches. Well, this happens to be a 100 inch capsule. So it starts out, at ne it can give me a value for negative 100 inches. Well, this customer wants zero inches. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna enter that editing mode. Editing is flashing, and now, what do I want to do? I want to take a numeric value and increase it. So I use the upward arrow, and now I will begin to go up from negative 199. Remember, I want zero. And there I am at zero. So I want to, I have a lower range of zero inches of water. So four milliamps will equal zero inches of water. And I enter that value. Edit stops flashing. Mode two is still there, telling me that mode two, which is the four milliamp pressure, is equal to zero inches. So what am I going to do next? I'm going to go to mode three. Mode three says the upper range value, in this case, again, it's a 100 inch capsule, so it gives me 100.55 inches. Well, my customer wants 48 inches. So I enter that editing mode, again, flashing. And what am I going to do? I'm going to use the down button to now scroll down to the 48 inches of water that we want to set. Stop at 50, start downward again. That was pretty good, stopped it right there. And now I'm going to enter that value. So this transmitter is now set up 0 to 48 inches. Now I've set up the transmitter, and 0 inches equals 4 mils, 48 inches equals 20 mils. Customer says, I have a very speedy process, and I want to have a really low damping in this transmitter. I want it to respond fairly quickly. So I go to parameter four. Now I step down to mode four, and right now I see from the factory that damping is set up to be two seconds. Well, a customer said that's far too slow for my needs. I need to change that to something like 0.2 seconds or in that area. 
So what am I going to do? Once again, use the right hand button to enter that editing mode. And now I have a numeric value of two that I want to decrease. So I'm going to use the down button, hold the down button. And now I'll begin to decrease. And I want to stop at point two. Now I went to zero. I'm going to come up. And there's point two. I lock that value in. Now I've set this transmitter up zero to 48 inches equal four to 20 mils, damping time constant of 0.2. Uh, I just want to make sure that when this unit is put in the measurement mode, that it knows the application is for measuring pressure. So I'm going to step down to application parameter, and it says pressure right from the factory. So I'm good there. The next and last thing that I want to check is that the pressure is the initial screen that you're going to get when this transmitter powers up, when you enter the measurement mode, any of those sorts of things. So I could use the down key and step from five to six, to, but my finger would get tired. So what I want to do is show you that, as I said before, now I can go back up the list to four, three, two, one, 35, that's the last parameter, back up to parameter 32, which says in the start view, which is the initial power up screen that you will see, this transmitter will show pressure. So I'm pretty much done. Easiest way to get back to the measurement mode and have this transmitter reading pressure is simply to use the left hand button all right, now this transmitter is reading pressure. Um, as you can see, it says I'm reading pressure. It's That's the application. It's in inches of water. It's giving me some diagnostic information because it's reading minus 0.7 inches. That's because I'm tilting this DP transmitter and it the low side of the transmitter is above the high side and it really acts as kind of a tilt meter. We have other things you can see to allow you to get more information from the transmitter than just reading pressure. While it's in the measurement mode, we can come to the either push button, uh, down I'm going to use, and step down into the list of parameters. Parameter two is the temperature of the sensor in degree C. I could change that with one of the other parameters I could change that to degrees F. It's a simple thing, as you can see. If I go to parameter three, it's the electronics temperature. Make sure I'm not overheating this transmitter. I can see percent output. I can see what the loop current is right now. It's 3.8 because I have the transmitter tilted. It's going to the low rail, as it's called. Here is one of the most useful things that I've seen in a transmitter. It is measuring what the voltage is at its terminals. Many times a customer will start out with 24 volts back in the control room, but due to lousy connections, miswiring, uh, too much loop impedance, whatever, this voltage is not enough to power the transmitter. Now the transmitter will tell you if you have a problem with approaching the low voltage limit that this transmitter needs to operate. If I want to go back to measuring pressure, I simply push the button once more, and there I am in P1 again, measuring pressure in inches of water. I hope you can appreciate the amount of information and how simple the new P32420 is to set up. We can do things with this transmitter uh, that allow you to do 90-95% of what you could do with a hard handheld or even configuration software and much much more simply and without any other equipment. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time. 
I hope you enjoyed what you've seen. Thank you. Thank you.